Our lesson today is the um, third part of a transformation, I call it. So a transformation has two things that we've learned so far. The H that's in parentheses has the ability to shift left and right, and it's the opposite sign of whatever it is. So if in parentheses I had an X plus 2, that means 2 to the left. The number at the very end, the K, a K moves, shifts the graph, it translates it up or down. So we, day one, we learned about K going up or down. Day two, we learned about H going left or right. Can you guys close your Chromebooks because you're not paying attention? Thanks. And so today we're learning about what if there's a number in front? We call this number the slope. It's an A. So the slope... Let me draw my little lines, H, left or right, K, up or down, A is my slope. So did you graph all four of these already? Yeah. Two of them were done. Check this out. If I put a two in front of my X, my slope is now two over one instead of one over one. So my slope used to be one over one, and now I put a two. What happened to this line right here? How did this line change from this line? Describe it in words, what happened? It got more, are you a helpful Honda person? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm shooting you. <laughs> 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 you. I know, we have all these workers, yeah, it's great. I work, I work at hiding. My job is to hide. So is. All right. So here we go. I have a slope that's steeper. So when there's a whole number, we call this a stretch. A stretch makes my line steeper. A two, a three, or a four in front. Right after the equal sign, a two, a three, or a four. So that's going to be. A steeper. Now, did you do number two? Rise one, run one. My slope is one. Reverse it. Down one, left one. Down one, left one. There's that. Okay. And I then can do my next one. My slope is three over one. Begin at negative one. Rise three. One, two, three. Run one. Down three. Left one. <clears throat> what happened to the graph when I had an A value of three? What happened? What happened to when I put an A value of three? A whole number three. It what stretched. So the graph gets... Steeper, it stretches. And here's how I write it in math terms. It had a stretch of three. A stretch of three. That's when a whole number is in front. Okay, turn the page. Number three. Can you guys please edit this um, issue right here? There's no parentheses. It was typed in wrong. Wait, edit what? There's no parentheses. I just wanted to say 4x plus 1. All right, grab the first one. One X plus one. But then if I have a four, rise four. Ooh, it's hard to see the lines. 
One, two, three, four over one. Down four, one, two, three, four, left one. Super steep. Imagine having like a nine over one or a 12 over one. It would be almost like vertical. So an A is a stretch. An A of a two, a three, or a four, a whole number, makes it more towards the y-axis. It gets steeper. Stretch. Steeper. Stretch. SS. Like you can remember it that way, maybe. Can you please close your Chromebooks? Whatever. Thanks. Okay. Here we go now. Next topic. A compression. A compression is going to be when I have a fraction in front. One half, one third, one fourth, even three fourths or seven eighths or any fraction. It's going to flatten out my graph. It's obviously going to do the opposite of make it steep. It's going to flatten it. So I'm going to do. Graph both of these. Minus two. Rise one, run one. Rise one, run one. So graph the parent function or the original. Wait. Okay. Now, if my slope is one fourth. So graph it as normal. Begin at negative two. And my slope is one fourth. Rise one, run one, two, three, four. Down one, and then one, two, three, four. Okay, what's happening? This is a called a compression by one fourth. That's what's happening. I'm compressing, I'm flattening fraction flatten. Yep. It's a way for you to remember. The fraction means fraction that it gets flattened. Flatten. Yeah. Or am I supposed to say flatter? No, your end just looks weird. Like an yeah. Okay. Grab the last two by yourself. Number five. Go, go, go. All right, here we go. X minus four. Slope is one. A fraction is going to flatten it out. So that's the difference. The slope is the number right after the equal sign, like it is normally. So now let's do your classwork and your homework together. So that you don't have anything to do over Halloween weekend. Yay. All right. Are you guys, that's not you, right? No, it's not others. Good. No school Monday. All right.
The cost of renting a landscaping tractor is $100 security deposit. I have to give them $100 plus $40 every hour if I, you know, rent for two hours, three hours. The function F represents the cost of running the tractor. Here's F of X. I have to pay $100 and $40 every hour. Someone tell me. Go. Uh, 40X plus 100. 40X plus $100. Perfect. The function G, so I have to make another equation, G of X. If the hourly rate were doubled, if the hourly rate were doubled, so I need someone to tell me what it would be if the hourly rate were doubled. Yes, sir. 80X plus 100. 80X. And then the $100 stays the same. Good job. So comparing them just means that the slope is doubled. Okay. That's it. That's our homework? No. <laughs> Whoa. Suppose f of x equals x plus 5. What happens if I put a 3 in front? What's what's a 3 do? Look on the board. Well, what's that called? A stretch of 3. All right. What's happening if I put a one third in front? Compression of one third. All right. So now, here we go. I am putting everything together, which means you need to tell me about the H and the K. The um, A does what? The 2 does what? The 8 does what? The 2 does what? Three things are happening on number 2. A compre No, compression means a fraction. Stretch. Stretch of 2. What's the eight? Be careful. Right. Eight, right. Nice. And what's the two at the end? Up two. Up two. Number three. A one half and a four and a seven. Compression, Compression of one half. You're right. It was left four. And then someone knew. Someone knew. No, you already helped. Yes, ma'am. Yes, down seven. And you can do four and five by yourself. Yourself. Turn the page, Margaret. Margaret, Margaret. Well, the chart... It's hard. I don't want you to do market by yourself. Margaret identified the different. Do you understand that I am recording a lesson right now? And I have to stop what I'm doing. And it's still recording because I can't press pause. But you need to talk, so it's disturbing me. Don't say we're. No. Me. So, if I had a parent function, which was this 2x minus 7, then I go, hey, a parentheses, which means left, right, of a some, somewhere to, to this way, to that way, I don't know. So, she said, Margaret said, oh, that's a vertical. That's up and down. Uh, Margaret's wrong. It's not up and down. 
The mistake is that it's not up and down. What is it if it's not up and down? If it's in parentheses, it's what? Left and right. I'm put whore is because I only have room for whore is. So what should happen? Two to the what? It's X minus two. Be careful. Good job. And then she had a two, a negative two. Ooh, what's negative? Downward facing. We haven't talked about that yet. The slope is negative two over one. And this is a stretch. So the problem is, is that it's downward facing. The line would be going like this. A stretch though would be a two. So she's right in that regard, but she didn't mention about the downward slope. Downward slope. Suppose, number seven, suppose that f of x equals 3x plus 5. Describe how the graph compares to f. What does a 4 do if I put a 4 in front of? I don't even want to put it in parentheses. I don't want you to think it's going to go left and right. 4 times this 3x plus 5. What's a 4 going to do? It already has a 3, and now I'm putting a 4 on it? Stretch. Good. Stretch by 4. Stretch by 4. Last page, are you happy? Yes. Yeah. All right, F plus one. You're going to actually draw this shifted, but which direction, left or right? Right. Oh, that's a plus one. Yeah. Left one. So here's what I'm gonna write, left one. And I literally am gonna draw this one to the left. You're just making the ordered pairs go one box to the left. So it's going to look like this. Par it's still parallel. That's nice. Maybe I'll do it in a different color from now on. So you're drawing it one to the left. At each like box, if you know how it has to hit in a perfect corner? Yeah. You would go one to the left in each order pair. Number two, it says minus four. What does that mean, minus four? Oh, down four. From my original, I'm going to go down. This is my y-intercept I started with. Go down four. One, two, three, four. But my slope is still one. Because that's what it was to start with. Up one over one. The whole line is just going to be shifted down four. My slope is one. A negative f of x. What did I say negative did? I talked about it on the page before. Yeah. Negative one. negative one is my slope. My slope is negative one. This is going to be a downhill line. So I'm going to start at the same y-intercept. And I'm going to go down one over one, down one over one. And there you go. Okay. Last one. What is it? What's the two? I'm doubling. I'm putting a two in front of the whole function. Stretch, Stretch by two. What's the slope? The slope is two over one. So I'll, you know, do my whole y-intercept thing. Up two over one. Down two, left one. 
it's just getting closer to the y-axis. Very good job.